Charlie. Hi, Ray. A hobby that's been going on for a long time is radio control airplanes. And today we're visiting with Charlie Vermillion. And Charlie, 58 years of building and flying these uh, radio-controlled airplanes. Has, has it always been radio control? No, it hasn't. It started out uh, as a control line that you fly with uh, two lines, and it's a tethered flight. Uh -huh. And uh, it's uh, something that's come along a long ways. Even today, they still fly the control line airplanes, but we also have RC as uh, radio-controlled airplanes. Well, Charlie, how old were you, and, and what got you started? What got you interested in all this? My father came home with a small air, a model airplane, and I just I looked at it, and it, it intrigued me. So your father got you started. Now, he flew airplanes. Is this something you could do together? Yes. This is what we did together, and what we would do a lot of times, back then they were hard to start. Today you can start, we have Star Electric starters. Years ago we didn't have anything anyways near that. You'd have to flip them with your finger or a stick or something. Well, they were hard to start because they were kind of crude, and they were glow engines, and some of them were ignition engines, and they just didn't want to start and run properly. So the easiest way for us was when we went to fly, we flew at the Delta parking lot, they're on race, or is that race? Yeah, race street, 34th and race. And what I would do, dad would take the car and take the airplane. He'd go there. I'd ride my bicycle. And we had spinners on the end of the props where they protrude, you know, into a point. So I, what we would do, we'd turn my bicycle upside down, put the, put the little glow plug on the glow, or the glow on the glow plug, and I would crank, the, and he would stick the, spinner on it which would rotate the propeller and that's how we got them started that was a crude way but it worked when did you get started in radio control radio control i did i flew the uh, the control line model airplanes the larger ones in in competition i flew in uh, kentucky indiana and michigan probably 1972 i ventured into rc uh, which I thought would be real easy since I knew all about airplanes and I could fly them. That was no problem. It made one round around the field and I had it in, in, in out of converse over at the flying area there. And it just tore everything up. Radio, engine, everything. So I learned a lesson there. It was a little harder than I thought. And so then I started, but after that I, I ventured on and the guy showed me what to do. And uh, from then on, why... I just took, I took what I knew from Control Line and I placed it in RC they, because a lot of times I build model airplanes, I, I put them together myself out of the boxes. They're just, maybe some of them are out of boxes, some of them are not. I, I build some from plans, just cut the wood out and put them together. And of course nowadays things have changed. They've come to what we call an all ready to fly airplane now. It comes out of the box, the engine in it, everything, see? And it's all ready to go. But what I have to do when I build them, I have to know a lot to do it. I got to know how to solder. I got to know what fillers are. I got to know what glues do. I have to know what to cover with and what to paint with and whatever happens. And most of all, you got to know how to sand. No substitute for experience, is there, Charlie? No, there isn't. The radio control part has really changed over the years. I mean, it's gotten better and better. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the differences between when you first started and what you're flying today? The infancy of radio control, I wasn't in on it. They had what they called an escapement. And what they would do, it only had, a, it only had one function, and that was the rudder. And it went right and left. But it, they call it a galloping ghost because it would flutter all the time. Now today we have proportional digital uh, PCM radios. We have and, and, and the newest thing out is a 2.4 gigahertz radio, which is a spread spectrum. Now it's just like a servo. It's just nice and smooth, and whatever inputs you put in there, it's there. But it can separate itself from another guy that's flying. Yes, it sure can. 
that's what that's what the spread spectrum is all about that that's a security thing and uh it's it's working real well charlie from the very beginning when you used a bicycle wheel to start those old glow plugs the engines have come a long way can you show us uh how it started for you and where and where you're at today when i started back in probably 54 somewhere in there we came up with a small airplane like this with a real small this is a thimble drone engine and it's it's a glow engine which means that the spark plug is not really a spark plug but a glow plug like would be on a diesel and that's how it runs and this is something that uh, it's made out of metal Usually you didn't see that. And this is a flying wing. Doesn't you can see it doesn't have any wheels on it, so it's the way it used the way it was. And uh, this is one of the first ones we started on. This is a Boughton one. Uh, it's plastic. Testers makes these. Uh, they made them for years. And this is more on the Star Trek side, as, as you can see. Okay. And uh, it's a pusher. That's a little different. And Here's the little cone we were talking okay. about. And it's a control line, though. Yeah, this is control line also, uh -huh. and it it works a little bell crank right here on the on the on the wing. So basically, you, know, you had elevator control. Yeah, that's all you have on 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 your control line airplane. Since it's tethered and flies in a circle, uh, all you need is a centrifugal centrifugal force that flies it. And all you need is just the elevator to make it go up and down. As your hobby continued, engines got better and better. Yes, they did. This is this engine here. That's that's called an H H B, and it's from Germany. And this engine was was one of the better ones. It this one here is up in around 1970 or a little bit, maybe a little bit newer than that. It has a filament on the inside made out of tungsten. It runs on alcohol and nitromethane. And when we put the alcohol in there and put that little bit of heat on top of it with a little battery, it, it does something to that element. That element draws the fuel up to it, and it chemically causes it to heat. And when it heats up, it explodes that, the uh, alcohol and drives the piston down, and that's what makes it run. As long as you keep it warm, it'll just keep it'll just keep going so that's one of the things for the glow engine this is the same thing only this is newer this is probably about 1985 and uh it's a it's a real nice engine and it's big this is the one what we call a 91 as you can see from the little one that we were talking about in this size here they also came along with what we call a diesel so this comes from britain this engine here and is actually a diesel engine uh, this in here is fairly new. It's not been run very much. It's real simple and plain. You're using diesel fuel? Right yes, now? a little more refined. Uh -huh. Right here, this is the throttle, and it has a little valve here. And what it's got, it's got a, got a barrel inside with a hole through it. And so what it does, it shuts the air on and off. Fuel coming in, this little bar that goes across, it sprays down in the crankshaft. And then it comes up and goes up into the cylinder, and it just repeats. And as long as it repeats, it just run. It'll run for a long time. This is Sado, and uh, these are made in Japan. These are really good engines, but they're expensive. This engine is a four-cycle engine, and this four-cycle engine with two cylinders, you have a valve here, and then take an exhaust on both sides, and then, and also you got two cams. You have a camshaft here and a camshaft here. And really, this little engine is a high-performance engine. Because of the weight of it, they had to get a little more performance horsepower out of it. And in order to do that, th th what they did is they, they put a hemi head on it, they put a high-lift cam in it, and they, a longer duration on the valves, and, it, and it's got high, and it's a high-compression engine, and it also has twin carburetors. This is what we call chainsaw engines. Uh -huh. if, if you were looking... Uh, one of them, and you were out there, and you seen this big prop on it, about two foot long, or maybe a little less, 18 inches. Uh, and you looked real good, you'd see the spark plug hanging down. Mm -hmm. And you would think, boy, that looks like look like it come off my chainsaw. And, or a weed, or a weed, weed whacker. Yeah. yeah, a chainsaw or a weed whacker. And really, that's what this is. Mm -hmm. uh, they've, they've changed it some. Uh, to see, it still has the, it still has the old ignition. 
just like uh, our, our lawnmowers has got and every carburetor's on the side and all that, and it's, it still has the heavy magneto. What year would be this? Uh, this one here is probably uh, probably about 85, 88, somewhere along in there. This one's two-cycle. It doesn't have any valves, okay. and it just runs just the same as, it, as the others do. In terms of performance, this engine here, would it do the same? This really outperform it, but uh, this one, this one here, uh, this is a 3.5 cc. And this is a 1. Um, 1.3 cc. This comes off, and we got what we call CDI ignition, electronic ignition, and you have a battery back here at, that performs where this mag would be. So that takes the weight off of it. So now that's how they're making them today, and and what it does is it brings the horsepower up according to the weight ratio. We have a good friend that this airplane belongs to, and I know you've helped him a lot, but also it's a new type of radio control flying that's real popular now. Uh, tell us about electrics. Yeah, electrics is a little bit different. The electric started out uh, as a park flyer. The park flyer was uh, to be attained by younger people or older people that wanted to learn how to fly, so that you didn't have to go to the flying site and put a lot of money in it because they were re relatively cheap uh, then the the, uh, the technology came and now we have what we call an outrunner engine it this or, or motor this motor this electric motor doesn't have any brushes in it uh, it has a larger prop um, it turns a lot of rpm and today the the lipo batteries those are they're fantastic but this is a whole new ball game. You just have to be careful on the lipos of charging them. They're a little bit tricky to charge. Uh, they've had a few little fires with them. But as you, as you go along, you'll learn what to do and what not to do. Are you flying electrics in pretty big scale airplanes today? Yes, today they are. Besides all these airplanes, what a library of magazines you have. Here's one that looks brand new, Charlie, 1959. And you, you still look back at some of these. Yes, I do. It's not any better technology but I like a lot of the ideas yeah. that you have in the older magazines. Uh, if you look at the 1959, and you look at 2010 at Ray's Holding, and if you look at the engine prices, it would make you flip. <laughs> but back then, $7.95 for one of these little engines was a lot. Well, Charlie, this has been a, a lifetime hobby for you. My wife says, that's all I think about. If I'm not deer hunting, she says, you like airplanes. That's all you know. Charlie, you're really blessed with the uh, American Modelers Association headquarters being over here in Muncie, being close. And also, you're affiliated with two flying clubs, very close, uh, great flying fields. Yes. Uh, affiliated with uh, Converse RC, Converse Eagles. And uh, I originally from uh, Miss Cinewall Skyhawks. And uh, we fly from uh, the Miss Cinewall Skyhawks flies over to of the other side of Somerset, along the uh, Missinawal River there at the uh, DNR has that. We fly there, and then also we fly at the Converse Airport. Charlie, you do a lot of work in this shop, a beautiful shop, and uh, we're looking forward to the upcoming mall show, and also you bring in some airplanes to this year's flying cruise in. Yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll bring two or three of them in. I uh, have a friend that I bring his, and uh, then I have my Sukhoi that I have. And uh, later on, uh, maybe some years down the line, I'll bring that BD-8 that I've got in construction, and maybe I can bring it.